the work that you have done for the people of this county is innumerable and your heart and passion in education, in healthcare, in women matters, women affairs, just wanting to see those groups of people empowered. What drives you to that? <clears throat> You're a Christian. Yes. So allow me to quote from the Bible. Okay. To those whom much is given, much is expected. Correct? Yes. So if we've been blessed, then we also have an obligation to give back. And alhamdulillah, uh, the good Lord has blessed me. But those blessings also come with responsibilities. Hmm. So now today, I look back at my life. I am where I am because of my education. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to contribute to education. Uh. And I'm making a lot of, and sometimes, even these attempts to contribute are frustrated. I tried to set up a university and I found every single roadblock that blocked me from doing that. I said, okay, I put it on ice. 9th of August, I'm starting it again. Wow. Okay. I set up a microfinance to help women, uh, which was called Fursa Leo, which means opportunity today. Mm -hmm. And I invested 35 million shillings in that. Crashed. Politically again. When mm. politics came, people told these uh, clients, uh, go and take the money, don't bother paying, this is a political gimmick. It wasn't. Okay? It was designed to help women because we were, we were doing it interest free. We were not charging women any interest. Okay? Crashed. But the one thing that I bless the good Lord for is I never give up and I'm very persistent so that university is going to happen hmm. sooner or later yes God willing hmm. that microfinance we're going to do it again yes okay uh, I never give up and if you look back at my life uh, you know we set up Gulf African Bank in 2008 I was actually going there so yes. go but there. the first time I applied for a license was in 1990 and I was chased out of State House. Then I went to see Franklin Bett a few years later, he was controller and he told me, hey, we're not 20 years later, we opened that bank. You wanted to do it in 1990? 20 years later, we opened that bank. Okay. In 1996, when I came to Kenya, back to Kenya, I set up an oil company. And remember, the oil industry was liberalized in 1994. In 1996, I was the first Kenyan to set up an independent Kenyan oil company. In four years, the majors made sure that I went bust because I had the audacity to try and bring in my own tank of fuel. Four years they destroyed me, okay? But look at it a few years later. Today, 65% of the oil sold in Kenya is sold through Kenyan companies. I sold my company, Gulf Energy, in December 13th, 2019. We were the fourth largest oil company in this country. I never give up. I from never, the 90s? From the 90s. And you see, that is the persistence that I'm bringing even in my race for governor in Mombasa. It's because I'm determined. I'm absolutely determined. Whatever happens, we must change the city. The city is on a downward spiral. We have to bring it back again. Mm -hmm. And that determination is what drives me to continue in this. I look at our educational sector and I say, this cannot go on, okay? We have to change this. I look at the people struggling. You know, I'm such a believer in education that I believe any student from Mombasa who qualifies to go to university, the city of Mombasa must pay for them to go to university. I've been saying this from 2012. I want to send from every constituency of Mombasa 
20 students every single year. I want to send them abroad to Malaysia, to Singapore, to Turkey, to the UK, to the US. Let them go and study. Let them go and see how other people run their countries. And then they will come back and infuse new energy and new ideas into this county. Okay? I'm a product of having lived abroad. I've seen things out there, and I look at these things and say, why not us? Okay? Hmm. And two days ago, I see Mandago sending uh, students to Finland. And I want to applaud. I want these kids to go to Malaysia and see Malaysia, which is a world-class country, also Singapore, and then ask themselves, what happened to us that at independence we were ahead of these guys, and now we look like some poor cousins compared to these guys? Yeah, what a vision. We have to make it happen, you see. Uh, the World Bank mm -hmm. identified three key cities in Africa as the, as the port cities with the most potential. Okay. Tangier in Morocco is number one. Durban, South Africa is number two. Mombasa is number three. Mm. We have to make it happen. Wow. Yes. What a vision. It's, it's, it's an absolute imperative, and I firmly believe in this thing. Hmm. And I know, you see, I know we can make it happen. I absolutely know. It can, it's possible. It is possible. And God willing, August 2022, that journey starts.